welcome to the spectacular Chateau de Bernon, an 18th century jewel in the heart of the French countryside. When we found her in 2020, she lay in peril. Share our journey as we battle to save her, uncovering her secrets, sharing her past, and working hard to secure her future. Chateau de Pernon's Court of Honour is flanked by these two enormous 50 metre long commands or outbuildings. And while on first glance they look very similar, their purpose couldn't be further apart. The Coma Est or Eastern outbuilding houses Pernon's more practical things such as the boulangerie, the laundry, various housing for domestic staff, garages, storage and is really about farm life and daily life here at the Chateau. Whereas in contrast the Coma West or Western outbuilding behind me was more about family life here at the Chateau and houses some of Pernon's most incredible features. So come with me today as I take you behind the doors of the Comar West and share with you some of its secrets and some of our hopes for the future. Come Twif, shall we go? It's impossible to talk about the Comar West without talking about what is visibly the most concerning feature of this building. As you can see behind me, the building has a terribly precarious lean to it. In the 1990s, a large support structure was installed behind the building to try and protect it from falling over and further sinking. And one of our biggest challenges why we're here is going to be how we can protect and save this building. But that's a story for another day. Today, let's look at the beautiful features hidden behind the doors here of this wonderful building. So the first thing I'm going to share with you is one of my favorite spaces here at the Chateau. And we're going to enter via the family entrance. And next I'm going to take you through the entrance that would have been used by the domestic staff. As we enter through the door here, we pass under a bell that is older than the chateau itself. It's dated to 1661 and is classified on the Monument Historique. It has engravings of the Virgin Mary with cupids. It has Roman writing around the top, which we can't actually see because some of it's hidden around the back. And it also has four coats of arms. But come with me and have a look at one of the most extraordinary hidden secrets here of Pernon. This Pernon's magnificent chapel, it's truly my favourite feature of the chateau, my favourite space. It's kind of hard to come in here without getting emotional and to think of what's happened here in the years gone by. We have documents to marriages that were conducted here and recently we found an obituary to the priest who served here for 51 years. The obituary was written in 1903 and it has some beautiful references to his time and his work and it states his friendship that never wavered to the owners of Pernon. It states that he was an intimate confidant of the Chatelains here at Pernon 
And on his tomb, it says for him, he never wanted to receive anything. Imagine the confessions that he received here at Pernod and his relationship with the family and the workers here. So the chapel has these enormous seven metre high ceilings with these huge columns and a balcony. And so this level, the ground level, would have been for the workers and the domestic staff and the family were up on the balcony. And we know that because there's traces of a more luxurious setting up there. The family and the domestic staff were definitely separated. However, the domestic staff were definitely part of religious life here at the Chateau. So this building, as you know, is falling over and in a terrible state of peril. And as you can see here, there's large cracks in the walls. And when Tim and I first arrived, we were petrified that the two huge stone sculptures that sat in these niches would fall. And so they've been removed to be protected, but they're the sculptures of St. Achard. So the family saint of the family that built the chateau here at Pernon and St. Blas, who is venerated by agricultural workers. The other incredible features of this beautiful space is this huge painting of the Annunciation. And then to my left, the Pieta, so Jesus' last days. So we really have Jesus' life bookended here with the Virgin Mary being told that she's going to give birth to the baby Jesus and then Jesus being brought down from the cross at the end of his life. The stained glass windows here are also very much about his life, representing his parents. So we have Joseph in perfect condition and then the Virgin Mary holding the baby Jesus. And like all things here at Pernod, the architectural style at the time was all about symmetry. So the door on the left of the altar goes to the priest's area where we have the drawers still for his robes, a private confessional and cupboards which still have prayer sheets and so on in them. But the door to the right hand side here is actually a fake door. It's there purely for the symmetry of this incredible space. What a space it is. And so it is our dream to get married here in this chapel. I'm not sure if it will be possible or not. Maybe it will be a wedding where everyone's given hard hats instead of confetti. <laughs> I think we're going to have to do that. If the previous door led to one of Pernon's most beautiful spaces, this door certainly leads to one of the chateau's most intriguing spaces. incredibly ornate staircase leads to the attic of this building and just two bedrooms. But whose bedrooms were they? Our stable hand. But before we go down and have a look at the stables, we've never been able to access the grenier or the attic of this building. The floor's in too poor a condition to walk on and the staircase leading up is also in very poor condition. But today I'm gonna to try and fly the drone through and get a look at this incredible space for the first time. Let's see if I'm successful. So this door opens to the grenier or the attic of the Comar West here. And it's this huge open space with this incredible charpente or wooden frame in what we call the style Philibert de Lorme. Philibert de Lorme was a Renaissance architect who developed this technique of building the charpente with smaller pieces of wood rather than huge, large oak pieces, and which enabled 
firstly for the Chapon to be built faster but also the most extraordinary thing is that you get these huge open spaces because it didn't require uh, cross beams but it's in terrible condition the roof is leaking the floor is collapsed and so we've never been in this space I'm going to try and fly the drone through and just get a closer look at this incredible space oh, there's all this really interesting graffiti here actually what is this 1827 all right Skydio do your thing It truly is a work of art. I wonder if the artisans who built this wooden frame nearly 250 years ago could have ever imagined the technology that we're using today to admire their incredible craftsmanship. But now, let's head down the stairs to the stables which sit under this beautiful space. These are Pernon's incredible stables. Four boxes, eight stalls. Can you imagine the hive of activity when this was in full swing? We know that the stables were used probably up to the Second World War. They were upgraded at some point because the original stone floor is now underneath this cement floor. As you can see, all the original features of the stables are still intact though. All the feeder boxes, all the stalls, it's really such an incredibly impressive setup here. The roof here, however, is in terrible condition. The large structural beams are very rotted from infiltration of water over a long period of time. But my second dream of this building is to saddle up horses in these stables once again. It would just be the most incredible thing. The horses here would have been used uh, for the shafts, so for the hunt. This property was a large hunting property. There's a huge private forest out the front of the domain, which is still used for hunting today, and also for agricultural horses. And we found lots of traces of the horses and the lives of those that lived here and looked after the horses. And I'm gonna take you to the tack room and show you that now. It's here in the tack room of the Komar West where we really see the full extent of the damage and the threat to this building. This is really not a safe place to be. You can see that the whole staircase has collapsed. Around me the walls have collapsed. But one interesting thing is in the actual tack room, the boiserie is in perfect condition. Come and have a look. This room really is testament to how important and how central horses were to life here at Pernod. There are 21 saddle holders. Oh look, <laughs> there's an old bit. Wow, okay. And all this tack still remaining. That's off a bridle. But there's still quite a few harnesses here. Wait. It must have, they must have had tags for each of the horses' names, probably to know where they were or which stalls they, or box they were in in the stables. It's actually got felt. But whilst it might be a little bit difficult to see the lean in this room, it feels like you've either had way too much to drink or you're standing on the Leaning Tower of Pisa. Whilst the boiserie is in perfect condition and as the building has sunk, the boiserie hasn't moved at all and the building has just collapsed around it. So it's really quite an uncomfortable feeling to be in this incredibly beautiful space. What would have just been so amazing in its time. Unlike the rest of this building, however, at the moment we believe that as long as the building is no longer moving, we will be able to save the chapel and the stables. This tack room, however, is, is long gone. It's too far gone. The best we can hope for is to protect it from any further damage.
So here we are at the back of the Comar West and you can see the enormous support structure that was installed to protect the building from falling over. And you can also see here the reason why we have these structural issues. So the level of the front of the building where the access to the stables and the chapel and the tack room is, is quite a lot higher than the lower level here. And this is what's caused this huge problem with this building. But accessed by the back of the building here are quite a number of animal calves. So let's go have a look at those. Come on girl. This calf here actually sits right underneath the tack room and you can see the staircase here is completely collapsed. I really don't want to go in there, that's not very safe at all. But the other calves are completely safe and really quite pretty. They have, some of them have stone floors. They all have these high vaulted ceilings. Well, remnants of how busy this property would have been when it was in full swing with the farm supporting everybody here. And so there you have it, the Comar West, or the wonderful Western outbuilding of the Chateau de Pernon with its incredible chapel, its huge stables, and this terrible reminder of the challenges that face us here at Pernon. Who knows, maybe one day my dream of getting married in the chapel and saddling horses in the stables will happen. But honestly, our biggest challenge is to save this building from falling down. And if we achieve that in our lifetime, that alone will be a massive feat.